we have is we schedule our own drivers and those that have their own trucks and dumpsters they they go on a different schedule for their workforce we can have our drivers who are circulating <coughs> as many as three drivers a day swing by and pick up the dumpsters and we think we can efficiently move those too but honestly the the loader uh, uh, crawler loader is the best piece of equipment and, and we're confident in that so this would be utilized in other areas of the city yeah. so this this cost of 130k would be solely on this no sir it's okay. a it's a unit they don't there's a, some of the companies don't even make those anymore they're getting to be less popular right. uh, because uh, people do have so many different options and like you said the smaller pieces of equipment but for what we're doing we feel like this is the best piece of equipment uh, mr hannah asked me to mention something else our our lightweight small dozer from 1982 has quit and part of the budget presentation that Renee has, we're also asking for a, a dozer as well. And it'll be available and can be used at, at times, but this, for what we're doing for this program, we feel like that's the best way to do it. Thank you. As a clarification from Council Brawler's question though, currently we do have the full load of this piece of equipment in this diagram, correct? In the, in the cost in this cost yes yeah, absolutely yeah right. i understand it will it can go to other places but for this for this discussion it's in there for all right how do we how do we allocate if we're tearing down a commercial business the cost how are we going to come up with a cost figure to say like it costs the city this mm -hmm. much money well i think we can easily calculate the time uh, the equipment there's a capital cost an hour cost and equipment there's an hour cost for employees uh, benefits and that number can be derived uh, just as the private sector would derive that number. Okay, so we can do the same. Absolutely. Yep. About 10 years ago, we did, the Street Department did have demolitions for about two years, and they have a time sheet, equipment sheet, and we've got daily costs on the cutoff of that is. Okay. Thanks, Tom. The next one on the decision of points for general fund would be a PD traffic unit, and that's in the other handout that I gave you earlier. There's a memo um, from Chief Birch on that. Um, in essence, what it says is it will cost about 135000 to put a two-man traffic unit out on the streets. Um, we would currently use vehicles that we have. Um, that we have a couple of chargers that those Tahoes would replace that we had built into the budget. We would just keep the chargers, and they would last a couple of years, he said. so. The upfront cost would be 135000 for the year for the um, two-man unit. The estimated revenue, and this is a very conservative estimate, um, <clears throat> we have 214600 but after um, Chief looked at some numbers, it's actually 204000 because you have to um, determine time off for your two um, people. And so the estimated revenue is actually down to 204600 But even at that, if you take the 204600 minus your cost for your traffic unit, um, you're still around 69000 over, a little over 69000 over, um, as revenue over expenses. <clears throat> in addition to this, well, not so much in addition, but we'd also like to ask for a court clerk whether we get the PD traffic unit or not, because we are really in dire need of another court clerk, because we're constantly using, and um, we have to borrow a clerk from PD twice a week. And then in addition to that, if someone's on vacation or sick, and so we're taking them from their workspace and their duties and borrowing them for court clerk. But if you funded the um, court clerk by the additional revenue mentioned up here that would be generated from the traffic unit, you're still um, about $29,000 over the actual expense for both the traffic unit and your clerk. So that's why we have no effect on fund balance because it would cover those costs. Any questions on? Uh, I think it's probably just good to spend some time now on the traffic unit. I'm sure that the council has questions. So, Chief Bird, you might want to go ahead and head this way too. I'm sure. Ken, uh, the uh, the life of the charger. I know we've had a short life on the engines. I believe, with Chief, and what you yes. expressed previously. So these would be used until, say, major failure, and then they would be disposed of or what, what I'm concerned with are we going to do any major capital investment in these units throughout their life if the the current chargers that we have still on the line on the patrol duty line are fairly low mileage and 
we don't expect, we don't anticipate having problems with them. Uh, the ones that we've had problems in the past start about 80,000 to 100,000 miles. Okay. And so we still believe we've got at least a couple of years of life out of them before we experience any problems. And at that point, we'll look at uh, something else, probably not Tahoe, because we both don't make real effective traffic vehicles, but maybe mm -hmm. something else like a Impala or whatever's on the market at that time. <coughs> why did the Impalas not make for good traffic vehicles? The Tahoes? No, why did the or, yeah, why did the Tahoes not make for good? They're just a little more, a little more sluggish. And some agencies use Tahoes, and, and that's fine. If that's the direction the council wants to go, we have no problem with that. Uh, they're just a little bit more sluggish, a little more difficult at times to turn around. Traffic units uh, work in a lot of traffic. You, you do do a lot of uh, quicker turns and getting around on traffic quicker, and and they're not quite as uh, uh, flexible to do that as a as a as a regular vehicle. But uh, they're a lot less safe. expensive too, right? sir. They're a lot less expensive. No, because no, we went through no, that. Cause no, the outfitting costs. Yeah, once you have you know, to, the costs really aren't that different. Uh, they're just for a, for a traffic type unit, a traffic specific unit like that. They're they're just a little a, a car, not necessarily a charger, but uh, my experience, a car is a little better than, than an SUV on that. But again, uh, you can get it done with Tahoe, no question. Chief, can can you speak again to the to the need? I mean, you and I've had several conversations about, about this, or at least one good conversation about this, the, about the need that the citizens that, that call and, and the complaints and y'all's ability to respond to them, that, that really warrants the need to, to have additional boots on the ground. Yes, sir. Uh, we, get, and I haven't kept stats on it as the number of calls, but we do get quite a few contacts uh, on a near weekly basis from people in neighborhoods uh, around town uh, talking about uh, vehicles maybe speeding through their area or they're running stop signs in their neighborhoods, uh, driving recklessly, especially around uh, when school starts. We'll get a lot more during that time. Uh, the way we currently address those needs is if we have uh, uh, squad cars available or vehicles available that we can put an officer in that particular area. We usually can only address those short term. We don't usually have the capability to, to be in those areas. <coughs> long term to try to take care of the problem. So from that perspective, a traffic unit gives you that flexibility uh, to be able to you know, dedicate longer hours, longer time to try to get the problem taken care of. Also, uh, with uh, uh, more aggressive traffic enforcement, uh, it is proven that there are less accidents, uh, especially when you work areas where there are lots of accidents. Uh, people tend to get more alert to their surroundings when they know they're going to see police cars down the road. Um, so it, it gives us that capability as well. Plus the fact that it will help us in uh, traffic units uh, work most all of the traffic accidents that we have, certainly the injury accidents. So that allows our patrol officers to maintain their regular duties and not have to pull off uh, to work traffic accidents themselves. So so there's that, that's a few of the points. Thank you. How many traffic accidents do we have kind of on average What's our traffic accident on a daily or however you can count about weekly or monthly schedule? We do uh, monthly reports on that, and, and uh, I'm not sure of the exact numbers. Uh, I know for a city our size, it seems like we have a lot of very serious accidents. Uh, it seems like we have a fatality almost a week, and we don't, but it just seems like that we have quite a few. And I can get those numbers for you. What, I guess one of my one of my concerns is is you know kind of the forecasting model of, of you know I, I understand that you guys are considering this a, a conservative estimate on this 15 citations a shift. I mean that seems like a lot to me, but I mean after at some point aren't we expecting the citizens are we're not going to be riding near that many tickets because if they know that that officers are out specifically for that, I mean don't we actually wouldn't we see the tickets actually go down at some point because people are not going to speed if they know? Just like and I'll, I'll use the the idea of a speed trap on you know the interstate or the highway or whatever. At some point, once you get known for that, people stop speeding through that area. And if we're counting on that revenue for these officers, do we? How do we? 
how do we prepare for that? Um, my experience in, in uh, having traffic units in the agencies I've been with is you don't really see those numbers change a whole lot. The areas that you do see changes is reduced accidents, uh, reduced serious accidents because people are slowing down. They're paying more attention to the intersections and the stop signs and those kind of things. So there may be some of that, but uh, unfortunately there's a lot of people out there that just don't pay attention and they will keep getting those citations. They'll keep talking on their phones and not paying attention and pulling out in front of people. And uh, So I don't anticipate, those numbers could change, but I don't anticipate it would be drastic. So do you see our city playing shorter than most cities our size as far as boots on the ground? As, I'm as sorry? Far, as far as the staffing we have for a city our size, for officers out on patrol, are we playing shorter than a, a, another town equivalent to our size, or are we about in the same range? Well, I, that's, I may be, I may not be here. <laughs> I don't know if I, let me, let me answer this one, Chief. Thank you. Um, there is no, there is no, and police chiefs will get themselves in hot water if they say, you're supposed to have X amount of no, officers just, for a thousand people. There, there really is no statistic. I will tell you, in the cities that I have been in, most recently in a city of a comparable size, Slightly larger budget, but but comparable community. We have more police officers than we do at Denison. Uh, my experience and my analysis in the two years that I've been here is that we do need more officers. I don't think we need a dozen more. We probably need you know, five to eight more officers. I think that's a conservative figure. And uh, I think adding two officers in a traffic unit will do two things. One, it'll provide the, those additional boots on the ground and allow a duty that is very time consuming. Uh, because you have to deal with people, you have to do investigation scenes, you have to write the reports. Um, and it will free up officers from a patrol standpoint to do other things in the community that frankly is not the time to do right now. Uh, so I think it gives us a number of different, different efficiencies. Thank you. I was just going to say, you don't ask the police chief if they, won't, if they need more people, because they're always <laughs> 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 Oh, you want staff to go with us? <laughs> 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 You certainly don't do it with three of his people. <laughs> 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 sure. <laughs> Other questions from council on that? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Um, last but not least on this page is the PD remodel. We've had these discussions several times. This would be year one. There is a five-year um, detail request um, if you want those that information I give you that as well but the first year be around three hundred twenty two thousand dollars which equates to about almost six days of our general fund balance so I just want to make you aware of that because we feel that's something that's really a need right now especially if you toured with us and saw the police department you understand that need you remind me, is that five years budget, is that pretty much equal of 300000 each time? The first year is the fifth year, and then after that it's anywhere from two and a quarter to, to 250 a year. I think, I think I remember that correctly, that's off my memory. And the years two, three, and four, five are pretty pretty equal. I think the fifth year is even less than, than all of them. Okay. And, and the reason why these are here is because they are decision points. They do affect the general fund, but they wouldn't be here if staff didn't feel fairly strongly that we ought to seriously consider the funding of them. Um, right, and, and I'm hopeful that at our August meeting we can at least knock out a couple of these, if, if not all of them, just give the council some time to think about these decision points and, and, and then again get clarity for the second meeting in August to start getting some final numbers. Yeah. Water and sewer. Yes, water and sewer. Uh, very similar to general fund as far as the way the slides look. You have your fiscal year 2013 projections for revenue and expenditures, and um, your total transfers in and transfers out. Um, very similar for both years. Um, as most of you know, I am very conservative, so when you look at your fiscal year 2014 proposed um, revenues, they are going to be less than current year because I don't want to anticipate. We're going to have a dry season again next year. You're going to have a lot of water revenue, so I always bring those numbers back down um, more to what I feel could possibly be reality. Included in these expenditure numbers, just as included is in the revenue on the general fund side, you have the franchise fee, which is 4% of your water sales. Um, your expenditures for fiscal year 2014, um, you're like, wow, that's a large decrease, even though we had that franchise fee included. 
Um, you have capital reduction. We had a lot of capital expense items we purchased outright in the current fiscal year. And then we had some leases falling off for next year, and that's why you had the decrease in um, your expenditures um, because we have included the pay plan in these numbers as well. And we'll talk about that on the next screen uh, slide as well. Transfers in is the $165,000 from the Water and Bond Fund um, for main extensions. Um, your transfers out is your 985000 to the water and sewer, I mean to the general fund, and then your capital project fund transfer. Your revenues under expenditures. Current year, that's a lot of that's going to be your capital um, equipment that we purchased outright. And next year, though, um, we're revenues over expenditures, even though we do have some capital built in, and we've added a new position as well for next year. We'll go over that here shortly. Your days of reserve, 72 days projected at the end of this year, 74 for next year. Your minimum is 55 and maximum is 91, so we still are within the range on the water sewer fund. Speak to the, uh, where we're at on the uh, capital projects. Uh, savings from doing recycling program because we anticipated that I think it was a 90 cents savings and so I'm assuming that our expenses should be down to cover for, for yeah that. that's that's reflected in the general fund and we're not seeing the savings that I originally thought we were we're just short um, we can provide a fuller detail analysis of that to council we've got a formula that we've crafted to help um, identify that with some of the mayor's input and help in that um, and before I give it to council. I just want to make sure we run our numbers again, double check them, uh, so you guys are getting accurate data. But we're we are at, we're we are not recovering the full two dollar ninety cents through uh, a diversion in the landfill. Uh, we do we do get the ninety cents from our uh, or two dollars from our, our increase, but I think we're probably close, collecting closer to like maybe thirty five cents or less. So again, we, we have a report coming to council on that. Probably see that late July or first. Is that going to include some of the how much tonnage we're getting hauled off from yeah. from the recycle and what our reduction of tipping fees or whatever? Yeah, it, it'll show it'll show the actual dollar yeah. amounts. And, it's, and I don't want to underplay it. It's 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 very successful and our participation is very high and our tonnage diversion is good. It's just less than we thought it was going to be. Okay. This next slide is your water and sewer fund details. This is what affects your fiscal year 2014. <laughs> We had the TMRS reduction as well here, 4%, and that equates to about $13,000. Workman's comp reduction of 20% was around $10,000. And your health insurance increase, um, which offsets those, um, or a portion of those, is around $18,000. Your water sewer franchise fee, we spoke about it, the 4% is $240,000. You have your paid plan impact dollars are built into those numbers, our one-time capital expenditures, and we'll speak to all of these here shortly. And then we have added a new employee to the water sewer um, operating fund. The next slide is the same compensation proposal as we spoke about before. It just gives you the dollars that affect the utility fund, which is the $125,653.01. Um, same concept that we talked about as far as the general fund, the pay plan impact, because um, there are some employees that have the pay plan impact, and then some will that could possibly receive up to 3%. Um, the next slide is, do you have any questions on that? The next slide is um, capital request equipment. And this, all this capital request equipment here is purchased from the operating fund. It's already built in. It's $98,900 um, for the water treatment plant, for sewer collection, sewer treatment, and sewer monitoring. And these have been built into the expense dollars that you've seen previously. The next slide is the additional employee. Um, that we have added to the um, budget numbers. <clears throat> this is a technical and administrative support employee, or um, we could also call them um, public works or assistant to the public works director. And um, we've added that to the budget. This is total um, salary plus benefits here. And Renee, let me just mention one thing with council's permission. Uh, this, this assistant public works director, uh, the, the concept is to to alleviate or provide some assistance for David specifically. That's the whole point of this thing. Um, David has more people reporting to him than any other person in the organization. I think he even has more than myself. Um, he's responsible for more areas of the budget than any other portion, person of the, or, of the organization. Um, and that, that takes its toll on him. Uh, it also takes on its toll on the ability to do things in that department. 
Um, having another professional level position in that department, I think, will increase the effectiveness uh, overall of that department and the timeliness of which uh, projects are completed, uh, just because there's, there's an extra set of hands around. Yes, I think this is a position I've been supporting for several years for David. He really needs um, someone there, his right hand person. Um, the next slide is the days of reserve, very similar to um, the general fund. And um, we have minimum 55 days, maximum 91 days. And as you can see in the gray area where you are already there, and anticipate exceeding maximum, um, depending on, of course, capital improvement projects and things of that nature in fiscal year 2018. These numbers can change though, depending on expenses and revenue, of course. But it looks very promising for the city. The only decision point for water and sewer fund that um, staff is recommending um, is the annex remodel. This is 50,000, which equates to two days of fund balance in water and sewer. This will be flooring and furnishings, moving some walls, um, the updating needs to occur if we plan on staying in the building and just to remind you that is we do lease the building and um, from Robert Hempkins I do believe he is willing to yeah, work with us on I've had a conversation with Mr. Hempkins and he's he's uh, more than willing to to allow us to make uh, minor changes to the structure if that's where we can go next slide is capital request equipment this these are items that are coming out of special funds um, you saw the capital equipment that's going to come out of the water sewer operating fund. This is money, um, these are items that we're asking to come out of um, the capital project fund, the forfeited funds, and the cemetery fund. The capital project fund, this is um, items new operations office and lab building that's for the sewer plant, uh, a three quarter ton truck. I won't go through all of those. You can see, you can read those. Um, if you have questions on them, we'll be more than happy to answer those. The dozer that he was talking about, that David was talking about, is in these numbers. That's $407,500 from the capital project funds for these um, capital equipment items. Forfeited funds, this is the police department. Um, they have several items here that we felt and they um, concurred that could come out of these funds. It equates to $113,083 that would come out of forfeited funds rather than general fund money to um, purchase these items. The last three items are for the cemetery fund, and um, their board, I believe, has also recommended these, and that um, equates to eight, a little over $18,000 to come out of the cemetery funds for those items that they are requesting. The next thing I want to go over is some of our um, funds that we're consistently talking about during the year and issues that we have and purchases, expenditures, revenue, and where we're at as far as balances at the end of next year would be 2014. First one is rainy day fund. Um, this is the one where we've set aside um, a portion of our sales tax dollars um, set aside for general fund expenditures. This year um, we anticipate we transferred some money from the city trust fund um, and some of the DDF revenue balance that we were using for um, demolitions. We've transferred that over into the rainy day fund and anticipate total revenues for the current year to be a little over one million. Um, and then we have the Schuler payment, but that's really designated money, but I wanted you to see that on here. Um, anticipated expenses for this year, a little over one million as well. And so that leaves estimated for year end at 130,000 for the rainy day fund. Um, to start next year off, and then if we um, have the same transfer of 210,000, we would end next year with no expenses at 340,000. Any questions on the rainy day fund? Next um, slide is the street improvement fund. And this is the one I was talking about as far as streetscape, if we receive the funding from the grant that we could possibly use um, funds from here to take care of at least that first year. The stream improvement bond fund, and we anticipate 400,000 overlay this year, 120,000 lighting for the viaduct, which would um, put us at 1.2 million in the year. And um, if we anticipate doing an overlay of next year, 400,000, that would put us 874. And, um, if you want to do the overlay and the streetscape, then you're down to, you know, a little under $500,000, so. 
just a quick reminder here for the council. <coughs> David, on the projects that you now got underway this summer with the, the concrete on Lillis, um, and plus I think there was some small overlays in, in this as well. How, do you remember what the dollar amount was for that? Uh, 60, 65 is what I have for this year. We haven't presented, uh, we've received a TCOG survey of our streets, plus we have a capital improvement plan which we're going to distribute to you guys. We just got copies in this week and it has a full evaluation of the streets and we're going to talk about that in our August work session okay. but this is a placeholder and I know that there's some other big ticket items for streets that we've been talking about. So, sure. so, so only 65 of that 400 has been allocated so far yes. this, this year. Okay. Okay. Any additional comments or questions on that? The next slide is the water and sewer bond fund. Um, anticipation of expenses for this year, a little over seven million, the majority of that being the Schneider Energy Project, which will leave us around 935,000. We have some projects, um, SSO projects, um, part Dell ground storage tank, and then our transfer anticipated for next year. I don't have any additional um, anticipation for anything for next year unless David wants to um, make a comment about that but if we only expense what we currently have on here we will end 2014 at 281 633 so we'll make you aware of that well, next slide is the capital project fund and this is the one where we transfer from the water and sewer operating fund based on water sales we have not expensed anything in that in 2012 or 2013 and don't anticipate doing so um, we're trying to build this fund up for capital expenditures, um, infrastructure, and as you can see, we've plugged in $407,500 in expenditures for next year to come out of this capital project fund, which will leave you at 48900 Any questions or comments about the budget process today? Okay, so, so again, kind of where we are in the timeline, we'll have budget items at every agenda between here and the time we adopt the budget. And in the August 5th meeting, we will um, really get a, in your packet, you're going to get a, by department classification, by department, um, what are we projected for this year, what are we budgeting for next year, and if there's a big variance, then I'm going to ask Renee maybe to have just a brief narrative. The way the council can read that before, we won't have to discuss line item by line item, but if they'll already know, and can ask questions. Um, and we'll, from that point, I guess we'll go straight into um, the major decision points and try to hash out as many of those as we can on this fifth. Um, and do the street discussion also on August. We'll, we'll have a see. We'll have a whole discussion on the capital improvement plan uh, that we funded this year on the August fifth work session. It would be good to be able to have, if there are some of those decision points that we can check off. It would certainly be good to do that in August fifth as well. Sure. Um, and. I guess staff, it would be helpful the two handouts that were at our desk tonight, one for the traffic unit and, the, and also for the uh, demolitions at that package, so it's all one. That would be great. Thank you so much for your efforts there. Um, the council now convened to um, executive session pursuant to Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code to discuss contemplated litigation to discuss purchase of real property regarding 517 West Woodward Street and to engage in deliberations regarding economic development related to the Preston Harbor development and to the TPJ property. Time is, did yes, you sir. read the Adrian Tom one there? Uh, I, did, um, Mr. Uh, I did miss that one. And to discuss pending litigation regarding Adrian Baton versus Fred Tillman. Time is 729. 